Hey guys, welcome to another Ruby on Rails based video. This one's going to be about active record associations. And this can get confusing to newcomers to the framework simply because it's a convenient way to declare associations between your database tables and columns uh, that is fairly succinct in how it works. Uh, it all happens within the model layer and you can we write these methods that hook into some logic behind the scenes uh, when your app is running and know what to do based on some database columns that are in your database. So all this stuff and more is in this video. So we're going to start basically just going through each of those ideas of the different associations in the pack. I am going to kind of give you a insider perspective on some some of the printouts that I'm using for my Hello Rails course coming out pretty soon. So it'll be some graphics related to these associations that are just kind of helper help sheets that I created. So without further ado, I'll go back into code and then look at our first relationship, which is known as belongs to. And this is going to be a singular naming convention that you add to a model. This is all going to take place within your models in a Rails app. So that's something to consider as you're viewing this video. Um, but essentially, it sets up a one-to-one -one connection with another model. So in our case, it's going to be author that the book is going to be referencing. So it's going to look for an author ID on the books table that matches the author ID of the record in the database elsewhere. So we'll match those IDs up and that's how those associations can actually communicate. So this is probably one of those fairly common associations you'll use um, almost always in a Rails app. Uh, next is probably the next second or the same kind of uh, common thing you'll use in a Rails app for declaring a many-to-many -many association or one-to-many, excuse me. Uh, so in this case, an author can have many books. So it's kind of the inverse of the book association to the author. In this case, we have the author that can have many books. So say you have an author model, and that's kind of your user model maybe in your app. Um, that author should be able to create or contain as many books as they you know have on their bookshelf or something, or maybe a fictitious app like that. Uh, the difference here, though, when you when you think about many is that it's going to be a plural naming convention. So both of these combined, the book belongs to author and has many books are necessary for those models to talk. So in any given relationship, a belongs to and a has many is required. Uh, you'll see that convention used a ton in the Rails app. So that's like the general idea of, you know, associating some sort of model with another. So in our case, maybe in the past, I've used, had like a user model that had many, uh, I don't know, um, posts. So like a blogging example. So a user would have many posts, but a post would certainly belong to a user as well. For this to work, the author ID would still be the reference in this case too. So the books uh, associated by the author ID. Uh, so on the books table in the database, there would be an actual author ID column that would match up with an author ID. And you could see that in your schema or whatever, when you're actually generating models and whatnot in those associations that you might need. Uh, next is has one. You might not use this as much, but it's very similar to has many. But in this case, as you can probably predict, it's only going to think of one instance of that other model. The supplier in this case would only ever have a single account associated to it and that's going to be through a supplier ID on the account table. So that's going to exist in the database. If you already know that you're going to restrict that user to one thing, uh, you can go ahead and use a has one or association there. Uh, next is probably the has many through and this one's pretty common way to associate a many 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 to many association with another model. So it's going to require a third model to the pack. And through that model, hence the name through, uh, we'll be able to associate different models. So in this case, I have a physician model, an appointment model, and a patient model. Now, we'll be able to create three tables in this case. And through that, we can say uh, we'll start with the basic uh, main source of truth, which is the appointment. So uh, the appointment table would have both a physician ID and a patient ID. So both of these can actually communicate to both the physician and patient uh, appointment can belong to that uh, through the ID relative to those models. Now on those other models, we need a way to associate through the appointment 
to get maybe some patient data. So we can get, say, if a phys physician created an appointment, uh, it needs to know who created that appointment. Um, and so they can do that through the appointment by declaring this has many appointments. So by default, we're gonna know that the patient or physician will definitely have many appointments. And then through that, we'll have many patients through the appointments. That allows us to query for like physician appointment patient name or something like that. So physicians dot appointments and, and loop through all those uh, and still get patient data back. Now the same is true for the patient. This is just the inverse essentially of the physician, but we're going to through the appointments model, uh, but we're declaring that it has many physicians in that regard through that model as well. So that's a maybe a little fuzzy, but until you put it to practice, does it really make sense? But the keyword here is the many to many association. So you can have uh, appointments that are associated with both the physician and the patient, um, and it's all through this model. Now, continuing on in that concept, we can say uh, the same for has one. So has one is a one-to-one -one connection still, but you can go through and query through that third model, which is a uh, maybe less common convention maybe in your app, but it's something that could pop up again with, if, you, if you just have that supplier that has that one account, uh, maybe you wanna get some extra info on that history. Uh, so this model account history is just for that. So we can get more data back uh, relative to that account. The difference here is we're gonna declare this has one account history through account. So the account is the main source of truth, uh, but notice it's still doing this has one account history and belongs to, so there's no many, has many uh, belongs to concept here. So in this case, the suppliers is gonna reference the supplier ID for the account and the account history will be referenced by the account ID so this one's a little probably harder to scratch the surface in terms of understanding it. I failed to kind of show you the graphics I made for this one, but it might help uh, in this case. So we've got the accounts here. It's going to belong to a supplier. It's going to has one account history. And the suppliers over here will have that too. And then it will be the belongs to accounts. So notice the ID of the account will associate with the account ID on the account history table. And then the supplier ID is gonna actually focus on the suppliers tables to the actual ID there. So it's a little fuzzy, I know. I should have showed you these before. This is all stuff from my course, actually. You'll, you're getting an insider's look. So the has many through, a little more visual of, you can have an appointment, uh, going back to that, if we wanna see that in our code. So that's what this was. Going back to the visual, we can see that the appointment's gonna be what is associated to both the physician and the patient, and that's through their necessary IDs that come stock with the table on the database, but the patients can associate, uh, it looks like I forgot some <laughs> text up there, still, still working on this, where the patient will has many appointments, has many physicians through appointments. So it's the same source of truth there. I might just, I'll have to fix that. I don't have the fonts on this system, so it's give me an error. Uh, so that's how that would work. Uh, going back to has many, the basic principle here is the has many books. So we have an author ID that associates to the authors table that has that ID of the author. Uh, so that's how we can communicate. The same is true for has one. So we've got that, uh, but it's a singular concept. And then on the belongs to, it's gonna be the same kind of concept too, but we'll have the belongs to where the books is referenced by the author ID in that association. So typically where you see belongs to, you're gonna have a has many on the other model. Uh, looks like I've still got work to do. As you can see, there's no code here. I still need to add that, but hopefully that's a little clearer when you see the visuals. After the has one through, we've got an has and belongs to many. So this is a, essentially the same thing as has many through, only there's no need for that third model need to actually add the code here that's going to be what we reference but it's going to end up being pretty simple it's going to be it has belonged to many parts and has belonged to many assemblies so on the assemblies model we're going to reference the parts just like so it hasn't belonged to many parts notice it's plural and has belongs to many assemblies 
So this creates what's known as a join table and that will be, you'll have to create the table, but it's essentially the pluralized version of both of these models put together as the convention. So in this case, it would be called assemblies parts. On that table would only be an assembly ID and a part ID. Now this, this method works and you might think this is, this is probably the simplest approach and it actually is pretty simple to get up and running so you can query through those. But it's limiting in the sense of I couldn't get any more data on the part uh, model f if I wanted to query through from it. Uh, instead, I can just have those join in such a way that uh, has the data that comes back. So um, where are we at? On this, this is kind of how that looks. We get that join table it only has these properties on it or columns. And then through that, we associate the ID. So this is pretty, it's restrictive in a way, but it's also very powerful. So you can actually associate those two, but only do such a thing like that. And the has many through concept, you can actually query through those models and get more data back uh, that are maybe already on those tables that maybe through the patient, I can query for the appointment date and so on and so forth. So it kind of gets uh, in the weeds there. And then finally, we have this polymorphic association. So this isn't a necessarily a common uh, actual association, but it's something I've seen out there that allows a model to belong to more than one other model instead. So in our case, you can actually as use this as property to um, reference this custom one you, you're using called belongs to. And in this case, you're inventing this. It doesn't reference any um, anything in particular, but we're going to have a pictures table with both of these uh, property or columns on them. So an image ID, imageable ID and an imageable type. So one thing to note that the able is kind of a convention there. Uh, so you can kind of make it carry on that naming convention when you create these kind of polymorphic associations. So that able, like a taggable or um, I don't know, morphable, I don't know. <laughs> It's a kind of a weird convention, but it is one that signifies to most developers who are in the wild out there that this is what that means. Maybe it's a polymorphic association because it can belong to multiple models at once. So the way it works is you create this instance of that belongs to and then pass polymorphic true to it. Then on other models it has many pictures. So it's going to reference this model or this database table. And then you can say as imageable. So that allows you to reference it and it's still polymorphic in that regard. Uh, so that would still require that imageable ID and imageable type on the picture table in the database. So that's one caveat to going that route. This would require both this and this where the IDs on these tables can simply associate to the same ID and type over here. Okay, so that's a quick run through of active record associations. I find myself using mostly has many and belongs to. I'll reach for has many through sometimes when I need to have that third model to kind of join uh, logic. In your own projects, you might use the same kind of concept, but there are areas where you might just need has one or has one through. Definitely check out the documentation. Uh, the whole point of the associations is just to make it simpler. So on your models, this all happens, but in behind the scenes, there's quite a bit going on in terms of uh, database communication and whatnot going on. So naming conventions are pretty huge. Uh, I mentioned that on like, so has many is gonna be plural and belongs to is gonna be singular. So always kind of remember that. Anytime you see has many will probably be a plural and has one will be a plur uh, singular. So it has one, hence one has many. I will quit yakking. Hopefully this was helpful. If not, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'll see if I can make an app coming up through another build that kind of utilizes some of these more advanced properties. So probably a has many through approach or something of that nature, maybe a polymorphic even. My course actually has a has many through concept for uh, we're making a Webit app. So it's a Reddit clone is what it is. So we actually have a has many through for uh, comments and whatnot for uh, what I'm calling submissions or the posts on a uh, Reddit thread. If you're interested in that, check out hellorails.io. Probably mention it at the end of this video if, if you want to hear more. But other than that, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.